Hey folks, Mark here with another vinyl update. This is kind of me playing catch up for the last six months. Things that I just haven't gotten around to showing. Um, things I've either got online or things I've gotten at shows, things I've gotten at record shows, at different record stores here in Cleveland, and some I've gotten at record stores outside Cleveland. It's just a mishmash, a hodgepodge, whatever you want to call it. Hope you're all doing well out there. Hope you're all finding the, the, the vinyl that you're looking for. And I'm looking forward to spring and summer. Kind of tired of this winter. So let's get started. I want to whip through these real quick. Um, as you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, there's a label I like a lot out of California called Dark Entries that I've been following. They typically release obscure new wave from overseas or things that have only come out in limited quantities on cassette back in the 80s. And so what they, they do is typically re-release this stuff and kind of give it a new life. And so uh, that's some of the stuff I'll show you here. And apologize for the glare on some of this. You know, I, I keep everything in plastic bags and I didn't want to take the plastic bags off for this video. Sorry. So I will do my best. This is an act called Art Fine. The 12 inch they put out sometime in the 80s. I don't know exactly when, but uh, the 12 inch is called Dark Silence. This is out on dark entries. It got compared to Depeche Mode mixed with Giorgio Moroder. That was all I needed to know. And it is a lot like that. If you like a mid 80s European dance, Check out Art Fine. Another issue on Dark Entries, BART. This is a collection called Bay Area Retrograde Volume 2. And it's just a collection of obscure Bay Area bands from the 80s. And they've just released some of it's been released, some of it not, or in small quantities. So they're kind of giving it a new lease on life. A couple of the acts you might know on here are Chrome and Tuxedo Moon. But there's other acts on here like Human Being Men and Indoor Life and Baby Buddha that are also quite good. There's another one that Dark Entries, Entries has reissued, a 12-inch from 1984 by International Music System called Dancing Therapy. They compared it to, uh, uh, what did they compare it to? They said it was a classic Italo disco single from 84, a huge influence on early Chicago house, Pet Shop Boys, and New Order. What else did I need to know? That sold me right then and there. And it is. It's, it's the ghosts of Arthur Baker and John Roby, famous producers of that time period, uh, easily could have produced this record. Good stuff there. And then the last thing on Dark Entries is Portion Control, a UK band who vary from synthesized to industrial to funk. They're kind of all over the place, but this is their first album called I Staggered Mentally from 1982. And this is a lot more on the minimal synth, um, minimal rhythms kind of tip. Uh, I like it, but I like some of their other stuff a little bit better, but good starting point from Portion Control. Speaking of Portion Control, here's another album by them, definitely more on the funk tip. If you like Cabri Voltaire and that kind of thing, you definitely want to check these guys out. Portion Control. This is an album called Psychobod Saves the World. I like this a lot. Switching gears, here's the merry-go-round from the 1960s pop band, uh, Jangly Guitars. Uh, they had a hit with a song called Live, which the Bangles later covered for their All Over the Place album. This is their debut album called You're a Lovely Woman. And lead singer Emmett Rhodes has a terrific solo career with only a few albums. He hasn't released a whole lot, but if you find his albums from the 1970s, Mirror, Mirror, Mirror being one of them, um, look those up and find them. If you like Paul McCartney and his style of songwriting, Emmett Rhodes is right up your alley, as is the merry-go-round. Here's a 12-inch I found from Debbie Harry called Feel the Spin. Never even knew this existed. Came out, I believe, in 1985. I'm looking back here for a date, and it, it is from 85. And it's from the Crush Groove soundtrack, Feel the Spin. Not really one of her better records, but it's Debbie Harry, so she always gets a pass from me. Pete Wiley, Diamond Girl. No, not the Seals and Croft song. This is his own song, Diamond Girl. This came out in the late 80s, and I remember when it was out, uh, I just kind of snoozed on it, didn't buy it, when he was going more in a dance pop direction alongside the album Sinful. Um, this came out on the Eternal label, and I believe in 1986, and I picked it up for a couple bucks. Good stuff from Pete Wiley. Here's one I've been looking for for a long time. Finally found one in good condition. It's Andy Partridge from XTC going under the name Mr. Partridge. And this is kind of a left field electronic, really more of a more of an experimental dub album that he did in 1980 called Takeaway. And the other side of it's called The Lure of Salvage. Andy Partridge. Not bad. I, I, I kind of like it. It's not the kind of thing, you know, if you like XTC, and they're more ex kind of dubby sort of excursions, that'll be a little more up your alley. 
Japan, Obscure Alternatives. By all rights, I should have owned this album a long time ago, but I've always passed on it because either the copies I would find were beat up or they were these reissues on the UK Fame label. And they would have this tacky Fame logo right across the side. And I'd always heard those were not very good pressings and I just didn't like that they put their logo right here along the side. So I held out for uh, a, a, a UK pressing on Hansa finally got my hands on it. Good stuff, Japan. Now here's a few 60s compilations. I love my 60s compilations. Here's one of moody, fresh, and fuzzy U.S. 60s punk. It's called The Night is So Dark. Jangly, moody, 60s garage. Here's some uh, European 60s garage. This is called Searching for the Wilderness, or no, Searching in the Wilderness, Pop Art Sound 66. Just good stuff there. Really, really, really like all this kind of uh, uh, garagey stuff. It has an early recording by Golden Earring when they were called the Golden Earrings. And see who else is on here that you might know. Q65 and The Outsiders. Not the U.S. band, but the Swedish group, The Outsiders. Here's another one. It's called Mind Expanders Volume 1 In Search of the Orgastic, Flashtastic, Psych Spastic Groove. Say that five times fast. Check her out on the back playing that sitar. She's just in love with that sitar. So you know what? How could I refuse? And I think it was on fun vinyl too. No, just black vinyl. I don't know why I was thinking it was on colored vinyl, but it wasn't. Here's uh, one called Writing Letters to Nowhere. This is a collection of late 60s Australian psych and garage. And then here's another one called Mystic Males 2 which is exactly what it sounds like. Male singer-songwriters of the Cat Stevens variety. Uh, maybe early Al Stewart. Um, I don't know. It's just good stuff. Real mellow. Uh, late 60s pastoral pop. This is a, a put out by the guys who put out the Soft Sounds for Gentle People collection, if you're into those. Leaving the 60s, but not going too far away, Follic Zoid, a band from, I believe, South America. Really good psychedelic band. If you're into things like Spaceman 3 and Spiritualized, check these guys out for sure. Follic Zoid, this is an EP they put out a few years ago on the Sacred Bones label. Here's a couple of albums I got from a band called Mental Ease. They're out of Columbus, Ohio. Really good. This, this was my soundtrack to this past winter. Just snow everywhere, cold weather. This music fit perfectly. If you like Rides Nowhere album, Chapter House, that kind of stuff, definitely check out Mental Ease. This is their album, Indian Summer, their most recent. I loved it so much, I went online and ordered their first one. I think that's actually the, the way the cover should look on their first album. And this one's called Living Dream. I believe it's called that. Living Dream. Yeah, this is their first album. Good band, Mental Ease. Here's some reggae from Dennis Bavel. It's called Make It, Make It Run. Good stuff. A double album and uh, just good laid back reggae. Some dub elements to it. I don't know. Much more to say about it. If you like reggae, check out Dennis Bavel. Now here's an album I've had digitally for a long time and never really pulled the trigger on buying the album. So I finally did. The group is Kaleidoscope. The album is Tangerine Dream. This is from the late 60s. If you're into things like Piper at the Gates of Dawn by Pink Floyd, Pretty Things, SF Sorrow, um, of course, Sgt. Pepper. If you're into those kind of things, you will definitely love this. Total ear candy. Just great melodies, great psychedelic pop. And this is a reissue on Sunbeam Records. Kaleidoscope, Tangerine Dream. The Carpets, a new wave band out of the late 70s from the UK. This is an album they did for Beggar's Banquet called Frustration Paradise. And it's just good power pop. Not really much else to say about it. New wave punk influenced power pop. Group from the 60s, The Crying Shames. I have another one of their albums called Sugar and Spice. This is one they did in 1969 called Synthesis. Great psychedelic pop. Great melodies. Totally catchy. Good production. All around, uh, just a great listen. The Crying Shames. A couple albums I found cheap from Black Uhuru. This one called Chill Out, which is exactly that. It's very mellow. Just kind of uh, uh, mellow reggae. Not too much else to say about it. If you like reggae and you like Black Uhuru, there's no reason you won't like these. This is a self-titled album they did from 1979 on the Virgin label. Black Uhuru. Huge fan. Here's something I had to send off for. I could never find it anywhere. A band I saw at Austin Psych Fest last year from Japan. And I'm going to butcher their name. Kikagagu Mojo. 
All right, and this album is called Forest of Lost Children. Dreamy, psychedelic pop with a lot of sitars in it. Really good stuff. I saw them live, and they just, they played, and there was a river behind them. So they played against a river, and I just remember just loving them so much, just sitting there mesmerized. And they didn't have any merch on sale, so I had to sit and wait and remember to order their stuff online. Finally got around to getting this uh, Scottish band from Edinburgh from the early 1980s, Joseph K., their only album called The Only Fun in Town. Paul Haig on vocals later went on to have a nice career as a solo artist in dance, but was in Joseph K., and they put out this album in 1981, The Only Fun in Town. I picked up a reissue of it. Originally came out on postcard. I got a reissue on Les Discs de Crepuscule, and it came with a bonus album with single tracks and, and the like. Great stuff. It had been on my list to buy for a long time. Had all the singles, but never did get around to buying the album until just recently. Here's one from Ann Clark. It's called Changing Places. And this is one she did, one side of it, she did with David Harrow. She's released a lot of things with David Harrow. It's, if you think, if you like, you know, dark, dark wave dance music from the mid-1980s with kind of a gothy kind of tinge to it. Ann Clark is definitely um, in that league. She she speaks, sings poetry over dark, menacing synths. And uh, one side of it she did that was very much like what I just described. The other side is with Vinnie Riley from Darudi Columns. So it sounds like Darudi Columns' beautiful pastoral melodies with her speak singing over it. Interesting stuff there. Ann Clark. Here's one that has only just recently gotten... Uh, Vinyl Issues by Blind Mr. Jones, a great UK shoegaze band from the early 1980s, featuring a flautist. They've been described as the moody blues of shoegaze, which, hey, I'll take that tag. But uh, this album here, Tatooine, is their second and last album. Came out in 94 on CD only. Never did get a vinyl issue. So uh, this label, St. Marie Records, a great new shoegaze label, has issued it over, uh, issued this on vinyl. And it comes on really great, beautiful color vinyl, too. Check it out. Blind Mr. Jones. Uh, their first album, Stereo Musicale, is a classic in my book. I really, really love that. Uh, I only have that one on CD. Don't have it on vinyl. Here's one I got real cheap from Different and Tilbrook. Of course, the main singers, the main songwriters, <laughs> songwriting team behind Squeeze. Always loved Different and Tilbrook and loved this song, Love's Crashing Waves, from their only album that they did under this name. And found a copy of it for a buck. I went ahead and snagged it. If you like Squeeze, you'll like this. Curtis Blow had to pick this up. These are the breaks. Early hip-hop record from 1980. The original 12-inch of it. Found it for a buck. Had to grab it. Curtis Blow. A few more things. The Ripe. This is a band. I'm not quite sure where they're from, but great. Psychedelic pop. If you like the birds, just jangly, hugely melodic pop with a slightly psychedelic tinge to it. The Ripe. This is an album they put out just a couple of years ago in 2012. It's called Into Your Ears on the Get Hip label. Here's one that was described as sounding a lot like Japan, and it sounded a little bit like them. The group is called Resistance. They're from France, and this is a record that came out on the New Rose label in 1990. And the album is called just Resistance. So good synth pop with a slightly um, dreamy feel to it. Great stuff from Outrageous Cherry out of Detroit. This is their last album that they did called The Digital Age. Sent off for this. It's out on the Burger label out of uh, Texas. And uh, just great psychedelic pop. Really love these guys. Wish they'd come through town and tour. Really, really like them. Here's something, Chiefs of Relief. This is a short-lived new wave act from the late 1980s featuring Matthew Ashman, ex of Bow Wow Wow on vocals and guitar, and also Paul Cook from the Sex Pistols and the Professionals on drums. This 12-inch called Weekend came out in 1987. Here's one I never had by Visage called Beat, Beat Boy, the title track from their third album from 1984. I never got around to buying it, and you don't see it much. So found a copy. Went ahead and picked it up. I'm a huge Visage fan, and and uh, rest in peace, Steve Strange. Definitely are missed. Gloria Mundy, a gacked out of the UK. They're a lot like Sparks, kind of a theatrical kind of um, new wave act. But uh, I don't know, it's hard to describe them. Like Sparks always come to mind, but they're not even really like that. Uh, this came out in 1978, I'm pretty sure, on the RCA label. And the two of the main members of these of this band... Eddie Maylov and Sunshine Patterson broke off in the early 80s and uh, formed a synth-pop duo called Eddie and Sunshine, who released a lot of fun records on their own. 
Here's one from Severed Heads that I never did own until recently, Gashing the Old May West. This catches them right in between the time where, you know, in the early 80s, Severed Heads was a lot more like Cabri Voltaire and a lot more um, reliant on experimental industrial tape loops. Whereas toward the late 1980s, right after this release, they got a lot more melodic and some of the later stuff started to resemble even like New Order and Chris and Cozy. So good stuff there. I really like Severed Heads. So it's good to cross that one off my bucket list, so to speak. 1098 from Face to Face. They were a short-lived Boston band. Had an actual chart hit with this song, 1098. I always liked it. Not the punk band. This is a different Face to Face. Uh, this came out in 1984, produced by Arthur Baker. Went ahead and grabbed it. Mark Riley and the Creepers. He used to be in the fall. Later formed the Creepers on his own and his own label called In Tape Records, which this came out on. And now he's a, 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 a radio personality over in the UK. Quite an esteemed one at that. This album is called, uh, I didn't tell you the name of the album, Fancy Meeting God, Mark Riley and the Creepers. Scratchy guitar stuff, not unlike The Fall. Telephone, new wave band out of France. Put out a few albums. This is the first one I've ever gotten by them. This uh, came out in 1984. And I would butcher the title, Un Autre Monde. I'm sure I had butchered that. I'm not sure exactly what that even means. But there you go. Telephone. It's a Metallo Disco from Hypnosis. This is uh, one called Automatic Piano. And uh, I can't tell you too much about it other than it came out in 1987. And one of the songwriters, this is what sold me on it, was in an Italo Disco duo called Koto from the mid-1980s who released a lot of really catchy synth pop in the mid-1980s. All right, a few more things I'm going to show, and then I'll have to do a part two on this video because we're getting kind of long here. Zeno and Oaklander, an album called Poor Avion. This came out just not too long ago. Good synth pop. Um, I don't know, minimal synth is probably the best way to describe these guys. Uh, yeah, that's it. Zeno and Oaklander. Really can't tell you too much about them. Sort of a country-tinged album from Green on Red, American band from the mid-1980s who started off kind of psychedelic. And by the time they got to this mini album, No Free Lunch in 1985, we're going in a more country direction. Green on red. A group called the Sunday Painters out of Australia. Very, very minimal compared to things like Cabaret Voltaire and the Swell Maps. Um, and even and the, I'm looking at the back here, and they even compare it to the Velvet Underground. I could see that. Lo-fi indie pop with drum machines. It's kind of the best way to describe the Sunday Painters. Here's one I never picked up, but finally did get around to getting from Noi. This is an album they did in 1986 called Noi 86. Great stuff. I love it. I think it's quite pretty in parts. Some of it kind of dancey. You could almost play it in a club. Uh, Noi 86, and it came out on really nifty yellow vinyl as well. Yellowish green vinyl. A couple more. This one from UB40, Cherry O Baby. A hit they had in 1984, I believe. Yeah, 84. And a good B-side called Frilla. Every time I see an old UB40 12-inch, I always grab it and see how the 12-inch mix is. Here's one from the Blues Magoos called Electric Comic Book. Never had this one before. I have their other one, Psychedelic Lollipop, but I never had this. So I found a good copy of it at a record show recently and pulled the trigger on it. Just late 60s psychedelic pop. Best way to describe it. J.D. Blackfoot. Now, this is a Southern Fried album. Uh, very laid back, but some really good guitar work on it. From the early 1970s, J.D. Blackfoot. It's called The Ultimate Prophecy, and this is actually a quite collectible album. I got a reissue of it. I've had to make do with the CD for the last 25 years or so. A friend of mine turned me on to this about 20 years ago, and I just fell in love with it. Just great, laid back, almost like could it be from California. You know, it's just got a really good sound to it. J.D. Blackfoot. But it rocks when it wants to. The Ultimate Prophecy. And then this one from BFG, a band out of Manchester, England. This is an album called Blue. And I think it came out in 1989. And it's been reissued in 2012 by Drastic Plastic. And it's very much, um, best way to describe it, somewhere between Sisters of Mercy, Red Lorry, Yellow Lorry, New Order, Section 25. Um, Drum machines, dark synths, and brooding bass and guitars. Best way to describe it. All right, uh, we're at about 20 minutes. I've got another stack of records I'm going to show, so I'm going to break this up and do it into two videos because I really don't want to make 
this 45 minute opus. So part two will be coming shortly. Keep your eye out for it. And I hope you're all doing well. Keep the vinyl spinning.